revelation into our lives. As we dive into the word of God, we declare all of you and none of me. Thank you, God, that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. And Father, we just give you the praise, we give you the glory for what you're about to do. We thank you that your word will not come back void, but it will accomplish what pleases you. It will prosper where it's sent. And so we send the word to everyone listening under the sound of my voice. Command every situation, every circumstance to get aligned with God's word. Bible says that those that are hearers and doers of the word of God, those are the individuals that will be blessed. So we set our hearts to be hearers and doers, and we declare our lives will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, and everybody believe and said, Amen. We thank God. Oh, wow. Amen. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. The Bible says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. You can stop right there. This morning, I'm going to talk to you about Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Um, as we dive into this text this morning, Acts chapter 2, we know that this is a, a text that has a lot of, uh, a lot of um, uh, things already happening in it. We have to backtrack and kind of see what is going on. Because we see, uh, we see uh, the day of Pentecost shows up and we see uh, the, 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 the sound from heaven. We see a, a, a mighty wind and we see the house is filled where they're, where they're sitting, where they, where they were. Uh, but let's backtrack because what is happening right here was what Jesus already told the disciples would happen. The Bible says in, in Acts, in Luke, excuse me, verse 24, Luke 24, verse 45 on down, specifically verse 49, he tells them to wait in Jerusalem until they are endowed with power from on high. He says, you all tarry in Jerusalem. I believe the, the reason why he tells them to wait is because the Bible says in Isaiah 40, he says, those that wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up wings like eagle. They shall run and not faint. And they shall what? They shall walk and not go weary. Let's go there. Isaiah. Isaiah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And uh, we see here that uh, this idea of waiting upon the Lord. Isaiah 40. And let's look at this. It says in verse 29, he gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. The young men shall utterly fall. But them that wait upon the Lord shall do what? Renew your strength. That's what am I saying? I'm saying, I'm saying that Jesus told them to wait in Jerusalem until they are endowed or equipped with power. And so now uh, it's been almost, it's been uh, 40 days, Jesus, the Bible says in Luke chapter 1, that he showed himself alive to the disciples for 40 days by many, many infallible proofs. In other words, he proved to them for 40 days that he was alive. But he, tell, he tells them to wait in Jerusalem until they have received the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, John speaking about Jesus says this. In Matthew chapter 3, John speaking about Jesus says that there is one greater that is coming uh, after him whose shoe latchet that he is not able to untie. He says, John says, I baptize you with water, 
but the one coming is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and what? And with fire. The Holy Ghost and with fire. And so now, it is now 10 days after Jesus ascended up on high. The Bible says that as he was, as he was standing at the, as he was at the brink of Galilee shoreline, he was, he, he was received by a cloud. He was received by a cloud and he received, he, 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 he left from where he is. Are you following me now? He left from where he is and went up on high. Are you following me now? Now, um, and so in doing that, in him leaving where he was and going to where, going to where, uh, 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 ascending up to heaven, amen, the Bible says this, 10 days, 10 days later, somebody say 10 days later, 10 days later after he had, after he has ascend, ascended up to heaven, 10 days later, the Bible says this, that um, he would, uh, Lord help me there, yeah, yeah. hallelujah, okay. So 10 days later, it's now called the Pentecost, somebody say Pentecost. So, so 10 days later is what we're talking, the, the idea of Pentecost is, is, it means the 50th day, 50th day. Pentecost simply means 50, 50th day. And so 50 days, the Bible says that, uh, that he would now, he would now, he, he would now say that he is sending the Holy Spirit. Now, um, let's look at this uh, because we are, we are now, the disciples are now waiting and they don't, they really don't know what they're waiting for. They know they're waiting for something, but they really can't. They really can't explain it. The reason why they can't explain it because they've never seen that before. Are you following me now? It's never really happened before. And so the Bible says this. It says, it says, when the day of Pentecost, I'm in Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, somebody say fully come, they were all in one accord. Now, the idea of being in one accord is not just being in the same place. Amen. So one accord don't just mean I'm in the same place and so we're one accord. The Bible tells you and I what, what one accord means. In, in Acts chapter 1 and verse 14, he says, These all continued with one accord in prayer and what? Supplication. In what? In prayer and supplication. So being in one accord is being in prayer and supplication. So they were praying and they really still didn't know what was going to happen. Are you following me now? Then it says, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Now, now the, it, it, the Bible describes it as a rushing mighty wind. In other words, it was the biggest thing that they could hear. The, the, it was the biggest sound that could have happened. Are you following me now? Now, the day of Pentecost is synonymous to the, to, to, um, the day of the festival of, of, of the weeks, the festival of the weeks. The festival of the weeks is when Jewish, uh, male Jewish men would come to Jerusalem, them and their family would come to Jerusalem to, cele to celebrate the Shabbat. Shabbat, are you following me now? Now, they came three times a year to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast. The first time they would come is, is Passover. Yeah, Passover. Passover is the Old Testament, the New Testament, we call it resurrection. Somebody say resurrection. Yeah, resurrection. The second event, the second event is 50 days from the Passover. So 50 days from Passover is what we call Pentecost. They call it the weeks of feast. Are you following me now? Then we have Another, we have another, another festival they come to celebrate, which is the, 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 um, the festival of the tabernacle. Are you following me now? The festival of the, of the, of the tab tabernacle. Now, this idea of the, the weeks of feast or the Pentecost, this was the first time we would ever see something like this. Now, uh, the Bible says that it was as a rushing mighty wind. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. 
And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Now, um, what I don't want you to now, 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 if you were if you were in Bible, uh, 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 Bible, Bible school like I was, when we talked about the book of Pentecost and we talked about this particular uh, uh, story, we used to have um, different uh, pamphlets that we would follow along, and so there, there is a there, there is a a a a, 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 uh, uh, um, a book that would that would go along with our uh, um, our Bible study or our, our Bible school. And when you, and whenever you came into this particular day, you will find you know people sitting in a group, you know, almost in a circular fashion, and you would see like a little flame uh, on the top of their head. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's been a child. You follow a little flame on top of their head, and, and it's like a little flame, and uh, and uh, and that's what they 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 depict the uh, the idea of Pentecost was. Are you following me now? But I don't want you to see that. What I want you to see is, I want you to see the biggest thing there is, the largest thing there is, the, the most grandeur thing that you can imagine happened on that day. Are you following me now? Now, uh, can we cue that up? Can we just cue that up real quick? I want you to see this, then, then I'll, I'll preach a little bit. Is that all right? Let's cue that up. Amen. Go ahead and cue that up. Praise God. All right, give me some volume. Yeah, maximize that. Okay, okay. Let me step step aside here. Go ahead and zoom in. Amen. somebody give God praise and give him glory. Amen. So that's what happened. It, it was not just, it wasn't just a flame of fire. Amen. It was fire that consumed the place. Now, why would, he, why would, why would they even, um, uh, why would they even dis depict the fire or even mention fire? Now, let's, let's look at this because uh, the one thing we need to understand is that the Holy Spirit is not a dove. Amen? He's not a dove. Now, the Bible says that when, when, when he was baptized in, in Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 3, when the Holy Ghost came, the Bible says they saw him as a dove. But it didn't mean that, it didn't mean that that's all the Holy Ghost was. Are you following me now? Now, um, in uh, in Genesis chapter fifteen, and let's let, let's let's just kind of follow this along here. In Genesis fifteen, when Abraham saw him, in Genesis fifteen verse seventeen, when Abraham saw him, the Bible says he saw him as a torch, a torch, Genesis 15 and verse 17, the Bible says, and it came to pass that when the sun went down, it was dark, behold, a smoke furnace and a burning lamp uh, was passed through, through, through the pieces. Now, in the, um, in the NLT, it says, hallelujah. In the NLT, it says a flaming torch. Are you following me now? A flaming torch. When Ezekiel saw him in, in, in Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 26, 
chapter one, but you can you can follow along. You can follow along. You know, uh, put the uh, you can put the uh, uh, um, a scripture down and, and look at that uh, later. But but I, but I need to I need to fo- I need to kind of w- move on. But when Ezekiel saw him in Ezekiel one verse twenty six, it says it was fire from his loins up and fire from his loins down. Are you following me now? When Moses met him in the born the burning the, the at born in bush experience, when he met God in Exodus, Exodus chapter three, verse two, when he met him, the Bible says that the bush was burning, but the bush was not consumed. Uh, um, 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 the Bible then tells us in Exodus thirteen and verse eighteen that our God, it says it says that God uh, 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 um, directed the people. Like as a fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. Are you following me now? These are descriptions of God. Hebrew would then tell us in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse uh, 20 and, and verse uh, 12 verse 29, excuse me, Hebrew would tell us that our God is a what? Consuming fire. Are you following me now? So when when it's no secret that when he showed up, in Acts chapter 2, he showed up like a flame of fire. Are you following me now? A flame of fire. The reason why a flame of fire, because light, light not only burns, but it illuminates. Are you following me now? Light, light not only burns or brings heat, but it also brings illumination. Okay. And so now... This particular event happened, but let's backtrack and see what Jesus said that would happen concerning this event. Now, let's go to, um, let's go to John 14. John 14. John 14, because Jesus talked about this event. John 14. Hallelujah. And we need to understand that now we need to understand that not only did Jesus talk about this, but the prophets also talked about this. Are you following me now? In John 14, and let's look at verse, let's look at verse 16. John 14 and verse 16. Glory be to God. Notice what he said. He says, I he says, and I will pray the Father. And he will, he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knows him, but you know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I'll, see, I'll, say, I'll say that again. He says, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now, this is Jesus talking to his disciples. This is the discussion in the upper room. He knows he's about to die. He has already washed his disciples' feet at this particular time. He said, he's, he's already said that uh, one of you are going to betray me. Are you following me? De- deny me. He's already said that. He, he, he stooped down, ungirded, he ungirded his, his, uh, his, his robe and washed the disciples' feet. And now there is, there is a dialogue as to what's going to happen after you go. He says, I'm going to pray the Father. He says this, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will send you another comforter. Notice, he says, another, another. Now, that word comforter means paraclete. It means what? Paraclete. Paraclete means, it means st- stand by help. Stand by. Paraclete. It means to come alongside with. Are you following me now? It means stand by. It also means, it also means, it means, it means, it means the one, it means the one that comes, it means the one that comes alongside with. Are you following me? It's almost a, a passive stance, a, a passive tense. In other words, he's not going to do nothing except you engage him. Are you following me now? In other words, the Holy Spirit is not like the devil. The devil wants to possess 
and he wants to have control. The, 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 the Holy Spirit is going to give you room to invite him to move. Are you following me now? In other words, if you don't invite the Holy Spirit, he's not going to come in and take charge. I don't know about you, but I need the Holy Spirit to come in and take charge in my life. Are you following me this morning? And so the Bible says, it says, it says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter. In other words, just like I have comforted you, the no, another one is going to show up. Are you following me now? Then it says this, the spirit of truth. Now, the spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. Are you following me now? The Bible says in John, in John 14, excuse me, in John 4, remember when he was talking to that woman at the well in John chapter 4, he says this, in talking to, in talking to that, that girl, he says, he says, God is a spirit. Are you following me now? So the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. Amen? Yeah. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in what? In spirit and in truth. Okay. Now, the word spirit is the word, is, is the word um, roha in, in, in Hebrew, but it is the word pneuma in Greek. Pneuma, pneumatology, the study of the Holy Spirit. Numa, Ruha, are you following me now? And so we need to understand that when it, that word Numa or Roha, it means breath. It, it means, it, it means, it, it not only means breath, but it means, it, it means wind. Are you following me now? It means, it, it means strength. It means might. Are you following me now? It also means it also means uh, a breeze, breeze. So, so, so when we and we find that word, that we find that word ruha in Genesis chapter two verse seven, when the Bible says that God formed man and breathed into man the breath of life. That was what. That was that was what. That was numa, or in the Hebrew it was roha. Are you following me now? That same Roha was what showed up in, Gen in, 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 in Acts chapter 2. Now, the prophets had already prophesied about this particular event. Now, we need to understand that in the Old Testament, the, the Spirit of God was present even in the Old Testament. But the, the situation is he would come on kings, priests, and prophets for a particular task. Are you following me now? He would come on what? On kings, priests, and prophets for what? For a particular task. Now, in Genesis, let's go to, um, in, uh, let's go to, hmm, go to um, Matthew. No, no, let's go to, in, in, in Ephesians, in Ezekiel. There we go. Ezekiel 36. Let's go there. Because I want you to see, I want you, what I want you to see is that, the Spirit of God has always been there. He's already, he's always been where? He's always been here. Now, in, um, in Ezekiel 36, let's go there. Ezekiel 36. Let's look at verse 25. Ezekiel 36 and verse 25. Glory be to God. Ezekiel what? 36 and verse 25. It says this. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. You remember what the Bible says. It says, you are clean through the word that has been spoken, that, that, has, been, that, I've been, that has been spoken out of my mouth. Are you following me? There's a cleansing that comes out of hearing the word of God. In other words, when, when you just hear the word of God, there's a what? There's a cleansing. Now, see what it says. It says this. It says, I will sprinkle clean water upon you. And you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will do what? Cleanse you. Now we're in we're in we're in Ezekiel twenty Ezekiel uh, uh, thirty six and verse twenty six. Notice what it says: A new heart I will give you, 
and a new spirit I will put within you. I will take away the stony heart from your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. I will, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statures, and you will keep my judgment and do what? And do them. Now see what it says. I'll read that again. It says, a new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put what? Within you. The idea of this is that is that God is that God wants to God wants to put a new spirit on the inside of you. Are you following me now? It's a spirit of it's a it's a it, when it says a new spirit, it is not necessarily saying a new spirit that you don't know about. Is that and, and it's it's a, it's a new spirit in in essence. You've never seen it. This, you've never seen it in this fashion before. Other words, in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God will come on you. Are you following me now? In the New Testament, the Spirit of God is in you and on you. In you to live saved, on you to, to do the mighty works of God. Now, let's see here in um in in first key in first first Samuel chapter 16, let's see this idea of on you. 1 Samuel chapter 16, and we're going to be going through a lot of scriptures, so just follow along with me. Amen. 1 First First Samuel chapter 16. This is when Samuel is anointing David to be king for the for the very first time. See what see what it says. I'm really try, I'm trying to show you that the Spirit of God didn't just show up in, in, in Acts chapter 2. That's what I'm trying to show you. That in Acts chapter 2 was not when he is not when. Um, he showed he showed up for the first time. In Acts chapter two was when the birth of the church would happen, when the explosion of the church as we know it would have, would, would happen. The inauguration of the church happened in the book of Acts. Are you following? Up till then they were domiciled. Up till then they were in fear. Up till then they were inferior. Up till then, they were they, they were in, in seclusion. Are you following? Matter of fact, when we met them in John chapter 20, when we met them, the Bible says they were in the upper room for the fear of the Jews. Are you following me now? What am I saying? There is a significant difference between uh, when you get saved and when you are empowered with the Holy Spirit. A significant difference. And we need to see that in Scripture. Because you just going to church, going to church and clocking in and going back home is not the godly life. God wants you to have, the Bible says, he says, he says, he says, they shall be in, he shall be in them. And, they, and, and, and it says this, I will be your God and you will be my people. Then the Bible says, it says, greater is he that is on the inside of you than he that is in the world. What am I saying? I'm saying there's more power on the inside of you than you and I realize. And it, we'll, we'll see this in here. And so, see what it says. See what it says about David. See what it says, says about David. It says this. In 1 Samuel 16, verse 13, it says, Then Samuel took the horn, Samuel being the prophet. He took the horn of the oil, anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. What did he do? The Spirit of the Lord did what? It came what? Upon. Not in word, upon. It came to endure, it came to sit on David. Are you following me now? In the New Testament, it's now, it's now within. Are you following me now? Within and upon the New Testament. Old Testament, only upon. Okay, okay. Let's, 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 let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. It says this. It says, The Spirit of the Lord came, up, came upon David from the first day, from, from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to do what? He went to Ra Ramah. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit came from the Lord and did what? And he did what? Troubled Saul. So, so, so Saul, which was the old king that disobeyed God, uh, uh, the spirit of God, the spirit of God left him, and David, the one that was chosen by God, not because he was any better than Saul, because to be to to be truthful, 
what, what David did was more outrageous than what Saul did. Are you following me now? Yeah, yeah. I know, I know Saul disobeyed God by not killing all the Amalekites. I, I know Saul had the big head, and the Bible says, it says, when you were little in your own eyes, I gave you the kingdom. I know that's what Saul did. Are you following? Otherwise, he, 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 he looked at himself bigger than what God intended him to be. What am I saying? You, you and I have to have a spirit of humility. A spirit of humility. Yeah, a spirit of humility. Are you following me now? That any good thing that happens in your life is not because of you. Hmm. I said, any good thing that happens in your life, it's not because, it's simply because of the grace of God. Are you following me? Amazing grace. How sweet that sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Are you following me now? Now, what am I saying? I'm saying the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God comes on David, not because David was any better than Saul but simply because of election. Simply because God chose him. He says, he says, he says, he says, he says, have you seen David? He says, David, he says, the one that I've chosen. Then several times he would say this. He said, he would say, a man after my own heart. Are you following me now? One thing I would say about David is, David was always quick to repent. That when he, when, when, he, when he missed it, and he missed it big, I, I believe that you're not all the way right until you're wrong. <laughs> I said, I say, you're not all the way right until you're wrong. Are you following me now? The Bible says it this way. He that thinketh he stand, take heed lest they fall. In other words, there is some falling as we walk with God. And we have to have humility to submit to the will of God in our lives. Are you following me now? No, 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 no. No, this idea of the Holy Spirit, this idea of the Spirit of God coming on, the, on us is, 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 to come, is to come upon us for us to be effective witness for God. Now, let's go to, hmm, let's see here. Let's go to... Hmm. Let's go to Acts. No, let's go to John chapter 16 as I begin to unpack this. So the Spirit of God is, I said the Spirit of God is, 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 is the third person of the Godhead, the Trinity. He is, um, he is the, 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 your standby help. The Spirit of God is, 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 the, is God's own Spirit. Are you following me? He's not less than God. Are you following me? He's on the Godhead. In other words, it's when you begin to talk about the, the Godhead, you talk about three distinct individuals walking in one divine flow. Are you following me now? There are three distinct individuals, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But they all work together. Okay. Now, in John... In John 16, let's see this, Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit. Now, one thing you need to understand is even Jesus did not begin his ministry until he was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Hmm? The Bible says this, he, in, 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 Matthew, in, in Matthew chapter 3, he goes into that Jordan where he was baptized by, 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 by uh, uh, John the Baptist. And when he comes out of the water, the Bible says the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God came upon him as, as a dove. It didn't mean he was dove. It just says as a dove. Are you following me now? Yeah. So the Spirit of God is not a dove. He is not water. He didn't come to make you shout, to make you jump, or to make you jerk. Are you following me now? He's a distinct individual, a distinct, a distinct person that has come to empower you and I to be effective witnesses for Christ. That's his job. To make you better than where you are right now. To make you more effective. To empower you. That's why Jesus says this. Jesus says in Luke 24, he says in, in, verse, in verse 49, he says, he says, go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. 
wait to he said, go to the Jeru Jerusalem until you are endowed or endued or empowered from power from, from, uh, 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 from, from power from on high. Are you following me now? Now, now that that empowerment is what you and I is what you and I desire. Because in 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 Luke chapter four, Jesus talking says this. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to recover the sight to the, to the blind, and to proclaim what? The acceptable ye of the Lord. Are you following me now? And so you and I need the spirit of God to be upon us. I say, you, look at your neighbor and say, you, you need the spirit of God to be upon you. You, you, you need you you need the spirit of God to be upon you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need. Yeah, I, I know. I know you. I know. I know you have it all together. But you need the spirit of God to be upon you. Now let's 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 begin to peel this. Let's begin to peel this, because I want to talk to you about. In uh, in my little time uh, uh, that avails me, I want to talk to you about thirteen. Uh, 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 church, uh, thir thir 13 are reasons why the Holy Spirit is important or the importance of the Holy Spirit. 13, 13 points. The importance of the Holy Spirit to the, in the life of the believer. 13 points. Are you following me now? Now, in John 16, and let's look at verse, um, verse 7. John 16, verse 7. This is Jesus speaking. We know it's Jesus speaking. Why? Because it's in red. Amen. Now you, ain't, you ain't got to, you know, you ain't got to, you know, think about this too hard. It's in red. So Jesus is, again, this is the, the, the dialogue in, in, this is a dialogue that is happening uh, way back, way back in, 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 in uh, uh, John 13. John 13, they are in the upper room. Are you following me now? They leave the upper room. They ain't coming back with Jesus no more. Yeah. Yeah. So this, whatever he's saying is important. Are you following me now? Now, just like, just like if you know this is your last day and you got to spend time with your folks, you're going to be telling them some important stuff. You ain't going to just be shooting the breeze, talking about what, what you know, the Mets are doing and, and, what, and what, what the Braves are doing. Are you following me now? What the father? No, you're going to be talking about some major stuff. Yeah, major. Where my money at? Are you following me? Where, you, where are you following me? Where my bank account? Are you, where, where my insurance? Are you following me now? This is where you find my insurance. This is why I got I got some houses over here, over there. Are you following? You gonna be talking about some what? Some major things. So it's in this mind frame that Jesus is talking to his disciples. He says this in John sixteen. He says this in verse seven. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient. What does that mean? Beneficial. It is necessary. Beneficial. There is benefit. What, what kind of benefit is he talking about? It says, it is expedient for you that I go away. Oh, back up, Jesus. You're telling me that, 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 that you going away, is, ben is, 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 is there's benefit in you going away. That, that when you go, if, if you don't go, I, I'm not going to get some benefits. But if you do go, there are benefits that I can enjoy. Notice what it says. He says, nevertheless, I tell you, it is expedient for you. It is beneficial for you. It is to your advantage. I'm in John 16, verse 7. Amen. It says, it says, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I, if, if, if I go not away, the comforter, the paraclete, we talked about that, the paraclete, the sta your standby help, your helper, your comforter, amen, your, 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 your coverer, are you following me, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will do what? I will send him to you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of what? Of judgment. Now, 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 many of us don't like to talk about that. Yeah, he will reprove the world of sin. Why? The reason why? Because we want to wallow in our sin. Yeah, we want to say, God, you know, you know, uh, 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 you know, it was a oops. Yeah, it was a mistake, God. No, it wasn't a mistake. You sinned. 
You knew exactly what you're doing, and you went head and feet, and are you following me? Head, feet, and hand first, and you did it anyway, especially when the Holy Ghost was talking to you. You better be glad he was talking to you because they're going to come a day if you keep doing what you're doing without with, and, and ignoring him, they're going to come a day that you, keep, you do that thing and you don't hear a voice. That's a dangerous place to be. You better be glad he's talking to you. Are you following me now? Because he's the one that will lead you, lead you back to repentance. And the Bible says, it is the goodness of God that causes men to repent. Are you following me now? Repentance is not a bad thing. Repentance is a good thing. Repentance shows, repentance shows that you are still in his will. You are still in his hands. And he's still working with you and still molding you. Or where we all this, this all these believers that, 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 that try to think or try to portray everything is all perfect. No, we mess up sometimes. We have boo-boo sometimes. We sin deliberately sometimes. But God is merciful. I said God is merciful. I said God is merciful. Yeah, God is merciful. That every time you go, every time you go to God, he will never cast you, cast you away. Or well, somebody sang the song and said, God is a, he's a God of a second chance. Now, I, I beg to differ. He's a God of a second chance, a third chance, a hundred chance, a million chance. If you keep going back to God, God will never tr throw you away. Are you following me now? Okay, okay. What am I saying? I'm saying, some people say, I'm saying, well, pastor, and you know, pastor, I can't come to church because, because I'm, not, I'm not right with God. If you could be right with God, then you don't need church. And who in the world told you that everybody in church is like that? The church is a spiritual hospital. From the person preaching to you to the, to the youngest person in here, we all need God. I said we all need God. Are you following me now? Away with all these pedestal preachers. No, no, we all need God. Okay, okay, okay. Notice what it says. It says, it says this. It says, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of the world is judged. I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Why? Because you don't have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Hmm? I can't tell you. I can't, I can't tell you. I can't, I, can't sh I can't share stuff with you right now because the Spirit of God is, is too much for you to handle. Are you following me now? Too much. Are you following me now? Then he says this. He says, how be when the Spirit, when the Spirit of truth is come. So the Spirit of truth the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, all the same person. I say, well, all the same person. Okay, let's keep going. It says, it says, how be when the Spirit of truth, when the Spirit of truth is come, when he's come. Has he come? Yeah, he's come. In Acts chapter 2, he came. Never to go back again. Hmm? And, and, and he didn't, and, and you don't have to go to Jerusalem to tarry no more because he's already come. Are you following me now? Okay, okay. You remember, you know, back in back, you know, back in the old church, they'll say, "We say, what you doing today? We're gonna have to tarry. We're gonna have to tarry for the Holy Ghost." And, and we, we we had a we had a church service, and and, and you got the mothers and, and, and the deacons, and the one to say, "Hold on," another one say, "Let go." What am I doing? Am I holding on or letting go? Are you following me now? Hold on, sister. You know, holler, holler out loud, sister. And you keep hollering and, and do all those things. And, 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 and at the end of the night, you just wore yourself out. And you went home with no Holy Ghost. Are you following me? Now, you're going to see how easy it is to receive the Holy Spirit as I, as, as, I keep, as I keep tracking. It's so easy. Somebody say it's so easy. It's so easy. Okay, okay. Now, now notice what it says. L let me read this. And we'll, we'll, let me read this and we'll jump into our 13 uh, the, 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 uh, 13 points and we'll be done for the day. Okay. It says, how be when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. What, what truth? All truth. Notice what it says. It says, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. He will glorify me. He will, he, will, he will receive of mine and do what? And he will show it unto you. Now, notice what it says. He says, the spirit of tr truth will do what? He will guide you into all, all truth. All truth. So it is, so since you have, and let me say this way. Since you have the ability to tap into the spirit of God, why not use it? 
Hmm? Why are you trying to, why are you now trying to, to navigate life all by yourself? The Bible says it this way. He says, it is not, in, in Jeremiah, he says, it is not in man that lives to guide his own steps. What am I saying? You need God's guidance. For every stage, for every place that you find yourself in, you need God's guidance. And the Bible says, he is the spirit of truth, and he will guide you into all truth. He will tell you, that's not the job for you. He tell you, that's not the that's not the place for you. He tell you, that's not the woman for you. He tell you, that ain't the man for you. Well, look, are we in love. He ain't the one. <laughs> it's amazing how mama mama can sense it that he ain't the one. But no, you you just you're too much in love. I'm in love, mama. I'm in love, mama. Like, she, he ain't the one. Why? Because mama is not, is not caught up in your feelings and, and what's going on. She's tapping into the Holy Ghost. Baby, he ain't the one. And you went down the road anyway. And two, and, 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 and two months later, mama, he, he, he whooped up. He whooped up on me. Why? Because you will, are you following? If we will only listen to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, he tell you, don't don't go out with that man tonight. Or he'll say, he'll say, he'll say, it's time to go home. T to your house, not his house, your house. Are you following me now? It's the, what is it? What am I? I'm, I'm not, I, I don't want to live this in church and, 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 and make you feel like things don't happen out there. I'm trying to, to mirror for I'm trying to, to marry to, to marry what's in church with what's out there. Because the truth is, he's talking to you. If you only listen. Are you following me now? Now, 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 now. Now, let me keep, let, let me, let me, let me keep going. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. Okay. Notice what he says. He says, he will show you things to come. What does that mean? If you can see what others can see, you can go where others can go. If you can see what others can see, you can have what others can have. Are you following me now? He will show you things to come. Yeah. He'll say, he'll say, he'll tell you, he said, he'll tell you. Go, go buy that or go invest in that. Are you following me now? Okay, now, let me, let me, let, let me, okay, so, 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 let me give you, let me give you those, thir those, those 13 things, and I'm done for the day, 13 things. Number one, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God, the importance of the Holy Spirit, number one, the Spirit of God empowers us to be effective witnesses. He empowers us to be effective witnesses. What does he do? empowerment are you that the reason why Jesus was empowered the reason why Jesus was effective was because he was empowered are you following me now N now 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 notice in Acts chapter 1 Acts chapter 1 now let me give you well Acts chapter 1 verse 8 hold your place there but go to John go to John chapter 1 because I want you to see this but I also want you to see that there is there are two empowerments <coughs> John 1, verse 12, and Acts 1, verse 8. Hold your place in Acts 8, Acts 1, verse 8. Go, go to John 1 and verse 12. Notice what it says in John 1, verse 12. It says, for as many as received him. Have you received him? I say, have you received him? Yeah, come on, talk to me. Have you received him? Yeah, it says, for as many as received violence, immolation, wrath, strife, sedition, Heresy, envy, murder, murder murders, drunken, uh, 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 reveling means party spirit. And, and, and for such like uh, of which I tell you, as I, I, as, I, as I also told you before in past time, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. What don't you understand about that? <laughs> Those that do such things don't, is not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Clear, clear as day. Well, pastor, am I going to heaven? That ain't got nothing to do with me. I, I don't have a hell or a heaven to put nobody in. <laughs> Are you following me now? Th those that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's what the word says. Are you following me now? So I ain't, I ain't got to, that's not my thought. That's not my words. That's the word of God. Okay, okay. Now, ah, how am I looking? I'm all, I'm all out of time. Okay, okay. I'm gonna give you, okay. Let's talk about let's talk about this empowerment, 
empowers us to communicate with God. Let's look at this very quickly and we're done. Is that all right? Uh, we're, we're, we're done. We're done. We're done. We'll look at them. We're done. Now, go to, go to, go to, hmm, go to Acts chapter 10 and verse 44. I want you to see, I want you to have faith in the fact that God wants you and I to speak in tongues. Yeah. He wants you and I to do what? To speak in tongues. It's a sign and, and a wonder. Yeah, it's a sign and what? And a wonder. Acts chapter, hmm, Acts chapter 10, see what it says. Now we said this was, that, that, that speaking in tongues is what? The initial evidence. It's not the only evidence, but it is the initial evidence. Are you following me now? Because I'd rather you have the fruits of the Spirit than speaking in tongues. Because I've seen some folk that they can speak in tongues, but they're so, so, so hateful. Are you following me now? They got, they, they're full of the devil, but they can still speak in tongues. Now, I want you to have love and joy and peace and, are you, and patience and goodness are you, and faithfulness to be on the inside. I'd rather you have the fruit of the Spirit than you over here. Uh, the, 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 the you over here talking about I speak in tongues. You speak in tongues, but you, you kin to the devil. What kind of tongues are you speaking? Are you following me now? See, see what? See what? <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a bootleg tongues. Amen. Bootleg tongues is what you're speaking. Amen. 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 No, no, notice. In, John, in, in Acts chapter 10, see what it says. Now, this is Acts chapter 10 is, 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 is Peter is going to Cornelius' house. Cornelius is a Gentile, so he already got, he already got an attitude trying to go there. He don't want to go there. He's a Gentile. Jews have no dealings with Gentiles. Yeah, let me say it another way. White folk got no dealings with black folk. That's how this was. Are you following me? So he don't want to go there. So God had to convince him to go there. He goes there, and the Bible says he kept talking for a while. He kept preaching and preaching and preaching. And the Bible says God just interrupted him and released the Holy Ghost on him. I gotta say that's enough preaching. Too much preaching. He just he just he just baptized them with the Holy Ghost. Then he baptized them with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak in tongues. Hmm? Then Paul then Peter said, Whoo, look at here now. The same thing that happened to us is the same thing that happened to them. Ain't no difference between the Jews and the Greek, between the blacks and the white. Are you, are you, there's no difference between a male and a female. Everybody's in Christ. Are you following me now? No, 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 no notice what it says. Notice, let, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Look, look at this. It says this. It says this. No, notice what it says. It says in, 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 in Acts, Acts 10, see what it says. It says this. It says this. It says, it says, it says this. It says, ah, it says, it says, when, it says, ah, it says, oh, what, what am I, I'm trying to start, I'm starting to start somewhere. It says, okay, it says, I guess I'll start in verse 42. He commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that, 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 that it is he which should ordain, which, which was ordained of God and, and to be the judge of quick and the dead and to give all the prophets witnesses and through the name of Jesus, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission. While Peter yet spake these words, he was still preaching. The Holy Ghost fell on them, on all of them which heard the word. And they were, it says, and they were of the circumcision. And so they weren't even on circum, they were of the circumcision, which believed were astonished. Are you following me now? The Jews. It says, that as many as came with Peter, because that of the Gentiles also was poured the gift of the Holy Ghost. And they heard them speak with tongues and do what? Magnify God. And Peter said, can any man forbid water that these should, that these should not be baptized? which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Huh? Can we stop them from water baptism when the Holy Ghost has already fall, fell on them? Are you following me now? Normally, normally, normally the sequence is you get saved, you get baptized in water, then the Holy Ghost fall, fall, uh, falls on you. No, God, he, he, inter he interrupted the process. I said God has a way of interrupting the process. I said God has a way of favoring you. Yeah, it should have taken X plus Y plus Z, but no, no, you, you, you should have came from A, B, C. No, God has a way of favor, of bypassing all the process and favoring you. Somebody said God's going to favor me. 
Somebody look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor and say, I'm God's favorite child. I'm, I'm God's favorite child. Okay, okay. So that's that one. That's that. That so we see here, we see here, we see here, we see, we see the, the flow of tongues after the Holy Ghost fell on them. Are you following me now? Now let's go to, let's go to now that was um that was almost um hmm, that was um almost 10 years after the baptism after the initial initial outpouring now 20 years 20 years after the, after the out, that out, outpouring let's go to acts chapter 19 acts chapter 19 acts chapter, 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 chapter 19 and uh, and verse 2 well verse 1 walk our way down acts 19 verse 1 i'm trying to show you i'm trying to show you that the initial initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. I did not say the only evidence. I said the initial evidence. And my question to you is, if it is the initial evidence, speaking in tongues is the initial evidence, why aren't you speaking in tongues? Are you following me now? That's what I'm asking you. And I'm really trying to say, release faith to speak in tongues. That's really what I'm trying to show you. Okay, Acts chapter 19 Okay, people, are, you, okay, Acts 19, I got to hurry, 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 hurry. Acts 19, verse 1, it came to pass that while, while Apollos was at current, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. Ephesus is where the Ephesians, the Ephesians church is, Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, who were they? There were certain disciples. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? What does that mean? It means there is a subsequent experience after you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and are saved. There is a subsequent experience. Are you following me now? There is the, the, the prerequisite for being, for, for the prerequisite of being baptized in the Holy Ghost is that you're saved. You ever, you ever went to college? And you try to take a class, and they said, "No, you can't take that class. Why? Because there is a what prerequisite. You gotta, you gotta meet the requirements first. Are you following me now? Now, them folk, them folk here in in Acts chapter 19, they don't. I said they don't. Okay, they have. <laughs> my bonnets is coming out. Amen. They have. Don't what? They have. They, they now saved. They are believers. Are you following me now? And Paul, and, and Paul shows up. 20 years later, he says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Why? Because there was something that was missing in their life. What was that? Come on now. What was that? Power. Power. Power was missing. Because power was missing, he said, something, something missing in your life. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Guess what they said? Guess what they said? They said this. He says, and, and they, he, says, he, he says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Verse 2, and they said unto him, we have not so much as heard, what, whether there be any Holy Ghost. That's why they could not receive it. Because you can, you can go no further than what you hear. I say you can go no further than what you hear. If you don't hear it, you cannot have faith for it. If you don't hear that God wants to bless you, he wants to increase you, he wants to prosper you, then you cannot have faith for God to do that. If you have not heard, if you have not heard that God wants to heal your body, then you cannot have faith for God healing your body. If you get, if you have not heard that God wants to deliver you, then you cannot have faith that God's going to deliver you. They had not heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. That's why they had not received the Holy Ghost. Are you following me now? Let's keep going. It says, then he said, then he said unto them, unto what baptism? Up, up unto what, what unto unto what then what were you baptized? They said unto the baptism of John. And Paul says, Verily John John baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him that should come after him, which is on what? On Christ Jesus. You, you remember that in, in Matthew chapter three, verse eleven, being baptized in the what? In the Holy Ghost and fire. Then the Bible says, it says, and when they had heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul laid his hands on them, and the Holy Ghost came on them, and they did what? Come on now, they did what? Come on now, they did what? Come on now, they did what? They spake with tongues and prophesied. What happened? They spake in tongues and they did what? And they prophesied. What am I saying? Tongues is the what? Initial evidence that you're baptized in the Holy Ghost. 
Amen. Now, now, go home and read. Uh, go home and read Acts chapter eight. Acts chapter eight is another. Is when is when um is when uh, uh, um Stephen went to um oh Philip, one of them. <laughs> Amen. Uh, hmm. Philip went to Samaria and began to preach the word of God. He's preached, he preaches the word of God, and the Bible says they called for, for Peter and John to come. Peter and John came, and the Bible says, it says, uh, when they believed, verse, verse 12, when they believed, uh, let me see here, am I there? Uh, okay, okay, yeah. But when they believed, uh, Philip's preaching, uh, 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 preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, uh, the, it says the name of the Lord Jesus Christ were baptized, both men and women. It says this, Simon, Simon himself believed also. It says, and they were baptized, they continued with Philip and, one, and, and, and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Signs and wonders is part of, is part of the ammunition or the tools of the believer. Okay, and I got to, I got to close. Now it says it says now the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, and they sent unto them what Peter and who and John. When they were come down, they prayed for them that they, they might receive what the Holy Ghost, for as he had not he he was he he was fallen upon none of them, only that they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then laid their hands on them, and they did what. And they received the Holy Ghost. Notice, they laid hands on them, and what happened? They received the Holy Ghost. Now the question is, what happened? Because it, sa it says, what happened? It says, he laid hands on them, they received the Holy Ghost. Then let's see, let's see the next scripture. The next, the, the next scripture says, and when Simon saw that, that through the laying on of, of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. In other words, he saw something. He could not have just, he could not have seen love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, because that's inward, right? He had to have seen something. Hmm? I dare say, I reckon to you that what he saw was them speaking in tongues. Because that's that's barely that's that's ev that's 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 evident. You can see that, you can see that very 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 quickly that they are speaking in tongues. And because he saw that. He offered them money. Are you following me? Now, what am I saying? I'm saying this gift of the Holy Spirit is available to every believer. Every believer. The Bible says this. It says, if any man in John 7, I'm going to two scriptures and I'm done for the day. Two scriptures and I'm done. John 7. John 7. John 7 and 30. Hmm. John 7 and verse 37. See what the Bible says. And I'm done. I'm talking to folks that, that may have not experienced this gift that I'm talking about. And I'm talking to you right now. And, and, and I'm trying to release faith for you to believe God to begin to speak in tongues today. I say when? Today. Notice what it says. It says in, verse, in John 7 verse 37. It says, if in, that, in the last day of, the, of the, that great feast, Jesus stood and cried saying, if any man thirst, so you got to be thirsty. You got to want it. Somebody said you got to want it. You got to be thirsty. You, you got to want it. Amen. If any man thirst, it says this. If any man, it says, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and do what? And drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had says, out of his belly shall flow what? Rivers of what? Of living water. Rivers of living water. Then it says this. But this spake he of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given. Why? Because Jesus was not yet glorified. What am I saying? You've got to thirst for it. you got to long for it. you got to want it. Now, go to Luke chapter 11 and I'm done. Luke 11. Luke 11. See what it says. Glory be to God. Are you, are you learning anything out of this today? I said, you learning anything, anything out, of, out, of, out of this today? Okay. Luke 11, see what the Bible says. In Luke 11, it says this. Luke 11. Luke 11, it says this. In verse, hmm, in verse 9, notice what it says. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, 
and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone, somebody say everyone. Somebody say everyone. Everyone, including yourself. Everyone, that's including, somebody say me. Yeah, yeah. Everyone that does what? Everyone that acts does what? Receive. And he that seeks, finds. And he that knocks, it shall be open. It shall be open. If a son shall ask of, uh, if the son shall ask bread of any that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him, will he for a fish give him a, a serpent? Or if he asks an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If, if ye then, somebody say, if I then, yeah, if I then, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts. How many people know how to give, give some good gifts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give, give, some, give some good gifts, yeah. Gifts of value, amen. N n yeah, gifts of value. If you then know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? What am I saying? If you ask, he will give. If you ask, you will receive. If you ask, it will be given up to you. And you follow me now. It's not, it's not maybe if, come again tomorrow. No, he will give it unto you. And you follow me now. And all you got to do is ask. The Bible says it this way. It says they were all filled and they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. In other words, if, when you are filled, you ought to speak. Let's stand to our feet. Glory be to God. Were you blessed today? Or somebody give God praise and give God glory in the house of God. All over this building. Heads are bowed all over this building. Eyes are closed in reverence to the next person beside you to give them their privacy. All over this building. You're here today and you say, Pastor, that message was for me. I need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. One of two things I have, I've been filled, but I need to be filled afresh. Or I've never been filled before in my life, but I want to be. God wants to fill you. God wants to indwell you. And all you got to do is ask. You hear today and you say, Pastor, that message was talking to me. I need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. If that's you, just shoot your hands up all over this building. I see that hand all over the building, all over the building, all over the building. I see that hand all over. I'm not asking you if you're saved. I'm asking you, is the power flowing through you? Father, you see these hands that are lifted up, God. Father, I pray. I pray as a, I pray as a minister of the gospel. I bring these to you even right now. Those that have lifted up their hands and said, I need an infilling of the Holy Spirit. Lord, according to your word, you said, if any man asks, he will receive. And so in the name of Jesus, I pray for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, even right now, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I pray that you baptize them in the Holy Ghost and with fire. I pray for a noticeable difference in their lives, the power to live saved, the power to allow the Spirit of God to flow and to be a conduit in their lives. Lord, oh God, do it in the name of Jesus. I pray it right now. I pray it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you the praise for what you're about to do. In this building, in this space, in this place, in the name of Jesus. Glory. You alone deserve the praise. You alone deserve the glory. In the name of Jesus. Repeat after me, everybody. Father, in Jesus' name. Come on, talk to me. Father, in Jesus' name, I renounce sin and all his ways. 
Jesus. Come on. Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. Satan, I renounce you and all your ways. I give my heart to Jesus Christ. I'm saved. I'm free. I'm delivered. And right now, because I'm saved, I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. The Bible says, if any man acts, he shall receive. So I ask for the Holy Spirit to indwell me, to fill me, to come on me in the name of Jesus. Right now, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, come on, talk to me. The Bible says, they were filled, they were filled, come on, they were filled, and they spake in tongues. And so right now, I release faith to speak in tongues in Jesus' name, my heavenly language, in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Now begin to speak in tongues. Don't speak in English. Just say, come, just say whatever comes out your comes out your spirit. Release that into the atmosphere. Mande korabosh, kande baraba. Come on, come on. Rabos gedi, radamba de boshi, lagande boshe de boho. Come on, come on. Lagande beshi, rondo de gede baha, magande skoto, randes gede ba godovo. Come on, come on. Let it flow. Let it get out your head and let it flow. Get out your head and let it flow. Get out your head. And the, the Holy Ghost came and they spake. He can't, he's already come. Speak. I said he's already come. Go ahead and speak. He's already come. Go ahead and declare the word of God in the name of Jesus. The Bible says he that speaks in an unknown, unknown tongue does not speak to man, but it speaks to God. How be it? He speaks mysteries. Release it out, out of your mouth right now. Release it out your mouth right now. I release it out your mouth right now. In the name of Jesus. You got to get out your head. Just declare what comes out your mouth. 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 Speak, 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 speak in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Thank you, Jesus, for their lives. Thank you, Lord, for this miracle. Thank you for this gift. Thank you for this sign. Thank you for this wonder. We give you the praise and we give you the glory for all that you are doing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Somebody give God praise and give God glory in the house of God. Well, God bless you online. God bless you, everybody. Good to see you. Hand, God's hand be upon you. You want to sow, go to credentga.org and give, and the Lord will bless you. In Jesus' name, I'll see you next week preaching the word of God to the glory of God. In Jesus' name, God bless you in the house. Amen.